All right, guys. I know it's been a while since I've done NF. I've been working full time. It's a busy, busy phase of my life. Uh, a lot of personal stuff going on too. Um, but I'm here for it. Merry Christmas, by the way. And I'm sorry if that offends you. You know, I I don't know what to say other than I'm gonna say Merry Christmas, and you might want to go write in your diary about it. Um, that's how that's how I was raised to say Merry Christmas. So. <laughs> Sorry if you don't celebrate Christmas, but if you don't celebrate Christmas, you don't care. Anyway, not the point. NF, got you on my mind. Here we go, guys. Yeah, so it sounds like he's he's talking to uh, well he's he's talking about how he has a lady on his mind who uh, it seems like her father was you know lost to pill addiction as well. Um, man, it's a it's a big problem. Um, same thing with crack cocaine in the '90s. Like it's it's an epidemic. It's a health concern. Um, and a big thing was um, you know a big thing was like stigmatizing specifically the drug of crack cocaine in the 90s and i'm of the opinion it's like look man the same thing's happening with opioids now it's like it's a drug addiction problem it's a mental health problem these people need help um i know personally people who um ha have had many addictions i myself have struggled with uh addiction uh fortunately i never got into opioids uh, but that's not to say i haven't um struggled with my own addictions for sure um so you know it's it's a problem and it's it's a really big thing especially in poor areas um like somebody it, it can happen these things are so addictive i mean i've known people who they, they break their arm they get put on vicodin for the pain temporarily and they the problem is when they break their arm they're out they're off work for like it a minimum of three weeks right it probably takes longer uh, for that to heal um, and then they they take the Vicodin and then they, already within a few days it's just like you're acclimated to it and um, you know it, you you need it for the pain and then you know you start to heal up a little bit but the problem is you don't have positive things to occupy your your time I feel like I think that's one of the biggest things in that and I won't bang on too much about it but people definitely they they break an ankle break an arm or whatever and they go on pain meds and they don't have work they don't have they don't apply themselves to something positive and a lot of people end up um it doesn't happen that way always but uh it, it happens a lot so let's keep going i'm already talking too much baby i got you on my mind I'm not the phone type, I'd rather be with you Sometimes I hold back from saying I miss you But I miss you I have to admit on this road I get lonely But you make me smile every time that you call me You let me be myself, you don't control me I got you on my mind, baby So I'm just going to comment on, he said, he said something, um, you know, I'm a big fan of like in person. I don't want to call you. I'd rather see you in person. Um, I'm a big believer in it. Uh, personally for me, when I'm on my phone too much, I, uh, get a lot of anxiety. I get a lot of, I start to overthink everything, uh, things that wouldn't have made me anxious before I, you know, I, I start to get really nervous and anxious even doing these reactions, man. It's, it's weird. It's creepy like putting myself out there and then having people comment the 95 
plus percent uh, of people who comment are really positive. Um, some people are negative, but it's just the fact of like me me speaking my mind and then putting it out there and then having it open for, uh, you know, open for rebuttal. And I've started to learn and grow a little bit to say like, you know what, if I speak my mind on camera and I say something stupid, like the Merry Christmas thing in the beginning of this video, if, if that, you know, if I shouldn't have done that, and in hindsight, I decide, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Okay, I'll grow, I'll adjust, but that that snippet of time doesn't define me. Uh, but the main point is, um, I I thought that was interesting because I'm a I'm a big fan of um, in person. I don't I don't like doing phone calls. I hate FaceTime. I do it anyway uh, with my with my sister's family and everything because I love them and it's it's hard with the distance. Um, so I do it more for them than for me. But it is cool to like interact with them but at the end of the day i'm i'm really i like being um wherever i am i like being aware of what's going on there and not concerned with um other things that aren't happening around me and i'm not really talking much about um his kind of like relationship thing here um but yeah it's, it's interesting that he says um i don't want to <laughs> i talk about his, uh, my phone as i have to keep checking it over here um family stuff it's important it's around the holidays sorry guys um so, um, yeah, it, it, he said, I don't, I almost don't say, I don't want to say I miss you. Um, that's an interesting thing. I'm not entirely sure what to make of that, but let's keep going. I'm just staring at the ceiling, baby I just want to know if you feel what I'm feeling, baby Got you on my mind, yeah Tell me what the deal is lately yeah. Deal is lately Deal is lately I'm, I'm, I'm a man of my word, girl, believe that I'm a closed book, but somehow you learn to read that Know that I should relax, hate the way I react Thinking that I'm good, but you know I'm about to relax that I'm good. I, uh, he said, I know you're the wrong girl, and I think I'm about to relapse. Oh, thinking that I'm good. Hmm. Thinking that I'm good, but you know I'm about to Yeah, so I'm gonna comment on that real quick. Um, a lot of people, um, when so I've I've had relationships where they've been um really really toxic, and the hardest thing to get away from that was really the loneliness when you leave. Um, because having someone around, um, even if even if there is toxicity, even if there's fighting, it's almost if your self respect is low enough, having that person around is going to feel better. Then if you try to break up and go and do your own thing and you know it might be good for you in the long run But at the end of the day like it's it's like when you're going to sleep at night and when and that person isn't there And you know, you don't you guys don't text anymore and that if you don't have um, Positive things to occupy your mind positive things you're doing for yourself uh, To combat that loneliness uh, whether it's depression or loneliness anxiety Whatever it is that you encounter after ending a toxic relationship uh, there's definitely, it's, it's difficult, you know, if, if you sit around and, and you, you miss the person, it's like, it's difficult. Cause it sounds like I'm saying like, don't miss, you know, don't miss the person. But at the same time, it's like, why it, it, get to the root of why you miss that person. It's not just like, don't miss that person. It's like, well, why do you miss that person? Is it because they would reassure you when you were unsure well, what if they were reassuring bad decisions and then that's how you got fired from your job or wh whatever the case is? Um, yeah, interesting. Let, let's keep going. All I can think of is you. I got you on my mind, baby. I got you on my mind, baby. Don't you know?
interesting, man. I think that might be it here. I know, I know. You guys are going to be... Some of you guys might be pissed. Oh, well. Um, yeah, man. NF. Okay, so he's... I'm excited to get to his later stuff. Um, because I remember when I first started this journey, I started out with... Um, some of his newer stuff and I had re-listened to the search and leave me alone not too long ago and I was I was comparing it to the early journey that I've been going through here um, and I was like wow I mean just the the progression in production and lyricism for sure an incredible uh, pr progression and I'm excited to definitely get to um, get to more and more of his work because I do believe that the sign of a true artist is progression through their musical career. Um, and it looks different for everyone because, I mean, if you look at somebody like uh, Kendrick Lamar versus Eminem. Now, Eminem's thing is I want to be the best lyricist. I want to be the best writer. You aren't going to be able to write better and, and be a wordsmith and, and have as many rhymes and internal rhymes and double meanings as me. That's Eminem's thing. Kendrick Lamar, after his first album, he took a, a, a different route with it. He started incorporating um, some kind of jazz, some rock elements, um, and, and uh, a few different elements that uh, on his second album that personally I didn't expect. Um, and it turns out Kendrick Lamar's thing isn't necessary. Like, he, I don't think his desire is to be the absolute. Maybe it is in some regards, but it seems like he has um, a, a, a different focus on like, I just want to like, try different now i know there's gonna be a million people that disagree but um it seems like his his musical progression is much more of a drastic musical shift and instrumental shift than eminem's progression as an artist now i think eminem's music has still progressed uh his songs have still progressed musically um but at the end of the day i, I eminem doesn't put value in the musical progression nearly as much as he puts it into his lyrical uh progression um and so i don't you know i th i think nf's thing is is i think from what i've heard i don't know nate firestein but i would assume it seems like he, his desire would be to reach a larger audience and not for sales but so that people could get you know have a positive message and more people could be exposed to a positive message i would imagine that that would be his um his desire and one of the ways you do that is improving lyricism and improving the musical elements and so i'm excited to get into uh more of him but i'll wrap this one up you guys take take care stay safe and merry christmas